Okay, so this is P9, which is forces and their effects. So we're going to be looking at some examples of forces. So let's look at some non-contact forces. So we've got obviously got gravity from the gravitational field around planets or large bodies in the universe. Uh, we've got magnetism. Obviously, we know magnets can can repel or attract depending on their poles. So north and a north will uh, repel, and opposite. Uh, opposites will attract, so a north and a south will attract. Electrostatic forces as well, so obviously a positive and a negative electron will attract, but two negative electrons will repel. Okay. Examples of contact forces are friction and, of course, air resistance. Okay. Forces are created in pairs and can be represented by vectors. So remember, vectors both have magnitude and direction. Okay, so that's the difference stated here. So how can we represent vectors? Well, we can represent them in vector diagrams. So let's have a look at these diagrams here. So if we look at vector A here, notice there's a horizontal component and a vertical component. So if we if we connect up one end of, of this arrow, okay, so if we move this arrow here, okay, and we connect up both ends, we will notice it will make up vector A. Okay, so it will sort of become like a triangle. If vector A is going in this direction, if we then put a minus sign in front of it, it means that the direction of the arrow is going to go in the opposite uh, opposite way. Okay. Similarly here, if, if we've got vector B going diagonally downwards, we've got the horizontal component and we've got the vertical component there. Okay. If we put a minus sign, uh, the direction of the arrow is going to go in the opposite direction. Okay. When we say a vector can be resolved, it means we can break it down into a horizontal component, its horizontal component, and its vertical component. Okay? So it says resolve ve vectors A and B in the diagrams above. Well, that's essentially what we've done, what I've shown you here. Okay? There's always going to be a horizontal and a vertical component. So in this case, minus B, well, you're going to have one vertical component there, arrow pointing upwards, then we're going to have uh, another horizontal component pointing from the right to the left, okay? You can think of the resultant force in an object as being the overall force of several forces acting on the same object, okay? So, let's have a look at this diagram here. So we can find the resultant vector of A plus B, okay? So if we've got a force going this direction, then we've got another force going in this direction. The resultant force, or the resultant vector, is obviously going to be the two vectors added up. But bear in mind, okay, so one end of the arrow, okay, has got to connect to the other end of the next vector in order for your resultant vector to actually make sense, okay? So please bear in mind, make sure you've got that rule in, and, you, and you actually put it into practice in your exams. Right, so... If we look at vector A, it goes 4 to the right and 4 upwards, okay? B is 1 to the right and 2 downwards. So here we go. A is 4 to the right and 4 upwards. Now in this case, because the resultant um, vector they want us to find is A minus B, we're going to go 1 to the left and then 2 upwards. So it's essentially the opposite of this vector here, okay? And then again, we, we connect up uh, the, the start and finish points of the individual vectors, and then that is our resultant vector. So R is A minus B. Let's have a look at this one. So B minus A. So B is our original vector there. Okay, minus A. So A is now uh, in the opposite direction. So it's B minus A. Our resultant vector is going to be like this. Okay. What about minus A minus B? Well, essentially, it's going to be the opposite of this vector there and the opposite of that vector there. Okay, so minus A minus B gives us the resultant vector R drawn there. Okay, so just, again, pause the video if there's anything you're unsure of, uh, you know, so those are your original vectors, and all we're doing is if there's a minus sign, the arrow is in the opposite direction, and obviously if there's an invisible plus, uh, it means it's the original vector okay so if there's no resultant force we say that the forces are in equilibrium 
Okay, you can tell if there's no resultant force because after you've added all the vectors, you will literally be back to the point where you started. Okay, so that's how you know if the forces are in equilibrium. So let's have a look at this next example. It says find the resultant force of the two vectors drawn in the diagram. Okay, so there's one here and there's one there. Add the single force that would be needed to keep the plane in equilibrium. Okay, so first of all, let's do the resultant force. So it's this one here, it's drawn for us here. Okay, so there's the horizontal component, there's the vertical components, that would be one mark. And then a single force that would be needed to keep the plane in equilibrium, well that means the resultant force needs to be zero. So essentially, we're going to draw another force in the opposite direction of that resultant vector. And it's got to be the same length as well. Okay, so make sure with your ruler, you measure that length and then you draw um, the same length uh, in the opposite direction, okay? Okay, so it says, use the squared paper to draw a scale free body diagram on the force acting on the glider to find the size of the resultant force, okay? So, we've obviously got 7,500 minus 6,500, which gives us a resultant force of 1,000 vertically upwards, which is going to be that vector there. Then horizontally, we're going to have 7,200 minus 1,200, which gives us a difference of 6,000, and that will be in the direction from the left to the right. So that's going to be um, this vector here, okay? Now, obviously, you've got to draw, you've got to create your own scale here, okay? So if I stated that four boxes, okay, equals 1,000, uh, newtons, that means for every box, that's going to be 250 newtons, okay? And again, it's going to be the same uh, scale uh, in this vector here, which means when you measure up your resultant vector, remember, uh, the resultant vector is going to be the sum of the uh, horizontal component uh, uh, plus the vertical component, if we move this vector over there, um, and then all you need to do is measure the length of your ruler, and depending on how much centimeters it is, okay, or, or how many small boxes, that is going to be the size of your resultant force in newtons, okay? Well, how can efficiency be increased? Well, it can be increased by using some good lubrication because that's going to reduce the force of friction and the energy transfer to heat. Otherwise, you can also increase fish efficiency by finding another use for the energy that would otherwise be wasted. So for example, if it was a uh, heat, you could use that heat to boil some water and that way uh, that uh, thermal energy is not being wasted. It's actually being used for something, okay? Mm -hmm.